What's up everyone? Welcome back. Nice to see you again. Uh, today I'll bring you some news on the display tank and my fabulous aquascape that I created for you in the last couple of videos. Not for you, for me. I was alerted to a problem today, so I'll come into the living room. This is my living room. There's a definite odour. Um, often, as I'm sure everyone knows, the first signs you get with a problem with your fish tank, if it's not a, a fish acting differently, it's a smell. If your aquarium smells fishy, you've probably got a problem. Truth be told, I probably smelt it last night. I do remember thinking, is it me or is that the fish? Well, that's, that's not how I meant that to sound. Um, I was thinking, is it me? Can I smell fish or am I imagining it? Um, came back today and I'm definitely not imagining it. And at first glance, there was nothing wrong. All the fish seem quite happy. They're all running around. Um, checked the sump underneath in the cabinet. No problems down there. Um, I've done a water change day before last anyway, so the water quality should be fine. I have checked the parameters. Um, there is a tinge of ammonia, nothing that you would normally worry about. Couldn't figure it out until I counted the fish. And I don't know if you can see it, but there are two blue fish there at the moment, and there should be three. So, started my search around the tank, could find anything. Started looking behind the plants, so as you can see there's some quite large plants and bits of wood, moving them all around, couldn't see anything uh, until you look at the angle from down here there-ish, it's really hard to see with just the faintest flash of blue and it's a different texture than you would imagine I think what's happened is this beautiful little hole that I created as a cave for the plecos or the quarries or whatever to get in but it'd be too small for the discus to get in. One of the discus seems to be trying to challenge that theory and has got himself or herself lodged in there. So it was a hole I didn't think was big enough, I didn't think there were any crevices but it seems to have got in there and got itself wedged and has died and is now probably decomposing. All the other fish seem to be fine. As I say, the water's barely, barely bad, so hopefully I've caught it in time. So now begins the horrible, grim job of extracting a dead fish. That's the remains of the fish in there. It is absolutely honking. It doesn't take much for a dead fish in warm water with some pickles having a go at it obviously to start decaying. And that smell is overpowering. Wow, I need to get this outside. So what I've also just realised is that was one half of my breeding pair, which was Having a break in the display tank ended up being a sentence to death in the display tank. So, lessons to be learned here, I guess. Um, just be careful with your aquascape that you're not creating potential hazards. Um, I didn't think I was, if I'm honest. I thought that was too small a gap for that to get into, and it obviously was too small a gap, but still tried anyway. So now, big water change. Actually, the first thing that I'll do is plug the gaps. So as you can see down here, I've just moved something in front of that big hole. There's always going to be chances when you do things like this where if a fish gets spooked, it can wedge itself in between those things. Um, so I think I've got as good as I'm going to get now. Thinking about that, I, th I already thought I had to be honest, but it's worth bearing in mind, I guess. It's discus especially, when they get spooked, and they can be spooked for all manner of reasons. In my house it's generally kids creeping up on them or running into the room and slamming doors and things. 
Um, these ones are actually pretty good, but they can just dart off in one direction. And things like pieces of wood, if you've got wood that's got a sharp point rather than a blunted edge, I've heard stories of them getting impaled on that even. Um, but obviously they're inquisitive enough to try and fit into these little gaps whether they're looking for food or things like that. Or whether it got spooked up there, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so one down, never good. Especially not when it's such an expensive fish and it's such a, an important fish, if you like, because it was going to be a part of my breeding project. But any fish, it's not what you want to happen. That's not how you want to see them live their life out. Sign off there. I've got some water changing to do. So, I don't know. It's one of those you live and you learn things. I thought I'd looked out for it, but obviously not well enough. If it helps any of you out, that would be great. Um, hopefully you can avoid that same pain of losing a fish. Um, as always, if it's helpful to you or you get any other tips or comments, by all means leave them down below. Um, like it if you like it, don't like it if you don't like it. Uh, give me a subscribe. I'm trying to show the, the good things as well as the bad things. Um, so stick around, check out some other videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.